The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. And with your people. In anticipation of the great day tomorrow, happy Mother's Day to all of you. I mean, you can have a happy day, even if you're not a mother. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Okay. All right. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch and Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain, full, remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light in the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response to the Lord's word is, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the book of Revelation. 
I, John, had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of the great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they shall stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst any more, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good and all the time. So the fourth Sunday of Easter year C is also called the Good Shepherd Sunday slash Vocation Sunday. So we are going to be talking about uh, the shepherd, Christ the Good Shepherd. I would like to contextualize the shepherd and the sheep and why Jesus says I am the good shepherd and the flock know me they know my voice and they follow me so I remember last year in one of the, one of the mission appeals which I occasionally uh, go to other parishes to do mission uh, appeal for, for the sister diocese in, in Kenya. So I remember sharing with them about the mission over there and how the people are being served. In that part of the world, the general population, they are nomadic pastoralists. So what, what does that mean? Their livelihood is based on the animals. 
and they move with their animals. So as the drought is, is becoming severe, they, they move looking for greener pastures. So they could be here at the, beginning of the, at the beginning of the year, and towards the end of the year they are in Detroit. So I was telling them how we have to take care of, the, of those souls too. So we have to go to them. We have to locate where they are and reach out to them. So and I remember after Mass, one of, uh, one of the uh, Christians there came and told me, Father, that, is, that sounds very hard. Is it possible uh, that they can put a GPS chip <laughs> in the animals so that they can just monitor the animals from home? I said, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Only that from the mass laws, hierarchy of needs, they are, still not, they are not yet. They are still down here. So maybe vision 2000. So <clears throat> normally uh, the shepherds, they are normally the, the young boys. And we have a shepherd from almost each household. And they take care of the animals jointly. So you can have a herd of animals over 200. And your animals, they know you because the, uh, you are with them all the time. So they know their shepherd and they know their voice. So and that shepherd can command his flock amidst the rest of the, of the other flock. You, you can call them and they will begin coming, but the rest will not stand. These shepherds too, they sleep amidst their animals. And they are there to protect the animals uh, from any, uh, any attack from any enemy. So they know their flock, the flock knows them, and they follow them. So that is the context in which Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and you are the sheep. So on this fourth Sunday, we celebrate the feast of Christ, our good shepherd, who willingly laid down his life for his flock. We celebrate our good, our good shepherd because he loves and cares for us in all circumstances. And he is willing to lead all who follow and obey him to the spring of eternal life. Now to our readings. The first reading narrates the events of how the apostles continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And one significant point to note today is that they have moved a step further by bringing the good news to the Gentiles who accepted it with joyful hearts. So this shows that Christ came for the salvation of all the flock as the good shepherd of all the nations. In our second reading, through the vision of John, God assures us that Christ, our good shepherd, is willing to welcome and save all his children. And that is why John tells us, I saw a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe, and language. They were standing in front of the throne and in front of the Lamb. Through his Son, Jesus Christ, God is ready to lead us to the spring of eternal salvation. His mercy, love, and salvation does not discriminate. And his kingdom is open to all his flock. And this is especially when we cheerfully embrace him. The gospel reading is very precise. 
but it bears, a, it bears a very powerful message for all of us who, according to the psalmist, are the sheep of God's flock. Naturally, we know that rights go with duties. So this reading notifies us of our duty as Christ's flock. The sheep that belongs to me listens to my voice and they follow me. On the other hand, it also specifies the responsibility of Christ, the good shepherd, towards his flock. He says, I give them eternal life and they will not be lost under my protection and no one will ever steal them from me. Hence, if we listen to the voice of Christ, the Good Shepherd, we are assured of his love, care, and protection. Christ, our Good Shepherd, never fails. And through our baptism, we have all been made sharers in the shepherdhood of Christ. So if you look in the political order, those leaders in the government, the president, the senators, the congressmen, the governors, the mayors, all of them, they are also shepherds in one way. In the family, we have parents, we have guardians. Also in education field, we have teachers, instructors, supervisors, superintendents. They are also shepherds because they have some flock under their care. Then also in the church, we have the Pope, the bishops, the priests, the chaplains, the directors and others. They are also shepherds. This weekend is Mother's Day, which is different from Women's Day. Right? Mother's Day, Women's Day. Are they synonymous? They are not. Though, so, you know, I told you all mothers are women. And you said, right. But not all women are mothers. So being a mother, that is a title there. And you qualify to be a mother because you are a shepherd. You do a good job there, taking care of those under your care. So they are also shepherds. And we are proud of them and we pray for them. So as the sheep of God's flock, let us heed to the daily call of Christ, our good shepherd, who says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you open the door, I will come in. As from Revelation 3. Yes, Jesus, the good shepherd of all nations, stands there patiently knocking. And he wants to lead us to the stream of eternal life. So let us not walk away from him. The psalmist also advises us that all that day you will listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. In Psalms 95. We ask God to grant us the wisdom and grace to continue to respond ob obediently to Christ, our Good Shepherd. And also, since it's Vocation Sunday, the Pope is calling all of us to pray for vocation, especially to religious life. And coming soon, from our diocese as we are ending the year of the Holy Spirit. So we are beginning another year of vocation and renewal. We want to pray for an increase in vocations in our diocese. So we need more shepherds. So those shepherds, they come from the family. So we have to be good shepherds in the family, which is actually 
where everything begins. You want a good leader? You have to have a good family. You want a good priest? Good family. So that is the source. So when God touches your family, one of, the, one of your sons or your grandsons would like to be a priest. Just say, Hallelujah. So we pray for more vocations and may we also be good shepherds after our Supreme Shepherd, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.